Okay, time for a new filament. This is uh, by J.O. I haven't used this before. And it's PETG, made in China, like most of the stuff. This is black. So I have been using California film. I really like this. It prints like a dream. But they were out of it, so I needed to get some more. So I bought this J.O. stuff. It's since back in stock, so it hasn't been a problem to get it recently. So let's open this up. Here. It's got a little flyer. Amazing discount, 25% off any color, okay? Amazon coupon. Interesting. Alright, well I have to look at look into that. If you like this filament and it's cheaper than the uh, California filament, then maybe we'll go with it. We'll see. <clears throat> Once I find something that works, especially PTG, I want to stick with it, but since we bought this, we're going to go ahead and do it. I bought this a few months ago, and it's still got a nice seal on it. So let's open it up. Got a nice vacuum on it. It's good. And it's got a silica packet, which is always important. It's got the same nice shiny color as the uh, California filament. So I put this aside. And um, so again, it's black, 1.75 millimeter. It's like it's nicely wrapped. It's got this little uh, tag here, which is helpful when you're pulling it out for the first time that you don't, um, you don't lose the end of it. So that's good. So let's see how much we got. We don't have a, I might have a reel that's similar to this, but I don't have the specific reel because we haven't used this before. But let's go ahead and see how many grams we got. So it's uh, 1111 grams. You can see that. So that's probably slightly low. I'm guessing this reel is just pretty thin though. Could be we got a whole kilogram. We might have gotten a little bit, maybe a few grams less, but. It's uh, it's okay. All right, so we're gonna do our usual test. We're gonna do a temperature uh, tower. And we're gonna do a bed and layer adhesion test, and then we're gonna do a fun test at the end. Okay, so we're gonna test our, this new PETG filament from JO using our temperature tower. We've been printing all of our PETG at 237, so since this was kind of a replacement filament, I don't really want to mess around with anything other than that temperature, but I figured I'd throw some of the temperatures in there just to get, get a range on it. So this one tests uh, bridging here and also how well I can do these pointy details and also indented lettering. So, so there's a link to this uh, Open SCAD project in the description, and you can customize it by putting in the starting and ending temperature and the temperature step. And I added this filament label so you can tell what it's PETG or PLA. So we'll go ahead and uh, generate this and then we'll put it over in the um, Simplify 3D and go ahead and print it up. So here's our temperature tower in Simplify 3D and we generated an STL file for that. And then we look at our process and we've got a bed temperature of 65. That's all, we've done all of our PTG at 65 lately. Then for the layers, we start out at 239, which is the hottest temperature, up through here. Then it switches to uh, 237, and then 235 and 233. So as it goes up, you always want to use the hottest temperature at the bottom in case you get clogging, because you don't want it to fail right at the beginning. So. so we'll go ahead and generate this, and it takes about 46 minutes to print. So we'll create a, a uh, G-code file, put it on a SIM card, and plug it into the printer and print this up. Uh, one thing before we start the test, it's uh, 84 in the garage, 85 in the garage today, could get up to 90. Yesterday I was printing at um, 95, 7 degrees I think in the garage, could get over 100 outside. And the print just failed, this is with the uh, California fan, the print just failed because it, was, it wasn't getting enough cooling so things weren't adhering at all. So, so uh, normally I would print with the PTG with the lid 
pushed all the way down on top and the door closed. But uh, this morning I printed one of my items with uh, the California filament. What I did instead was I just uh, laid this loosely on top here so there's a gap where we have some of the heat can, can release at the top and I've, I did it with the door open. So there's still a top here to keep the uh, aircrafts from moving around and so forth and keep more of the heat in but uh, it worked well this morning with the door open and, and the lid on uh, just propped on top. And that's going to be standard for printing when it's over 80 degrees out. If it, was, if it was under 80, I'd probably close everything up again like I did before. So. All right, so I'm going to load the filament for the first time. Let's see how it flows compared to the California filament. really flows nice and easily. So let's see how this comes out. It's always a good test and uh, reassuring that you know, if it's flowing out smoothly and looking good, then uh, it's going to be a good filament. So. That looks fine. It looks very similar. Similar to the California filament, so we'll get rid of this. Alright, ready to start our temperature tower now. PTG is pretty dripping. So, let's see what we got here. Move it up a Bed adhesion, so this is 65 degrees on the bed adhesion. Let's see, so this is really shiny. So 239 looks kind of blobby on the point here. Looks like 237 is good, that's what we like to print at. So, all right, we'll go ahead and do the uh, bed and layer adhesion at. Uh, 237 with 65 degree bed temperature and 10% fan after the first after the first uh, uh, layer. Now actually I accidentally kept the door closed that time but I'm going to leave it open this time. Looks like it did okay. The strength of these, t these bridges is pretty good. So. Alright, let's see how it turns out. Okay, so it looks like we want to print with 237 at 65 degree bed temperature. This is my favorite test to see if I've got the filament parameters dialed in. It does a right angle uh, print here so you can test the layer adhesion. If the layer adhesion is not good then this joint will be weak and you can easily crack it by squeezing these two parts together. Also test the bed adhesion to make sure you're getting a good bed adhesion. And it does a little extra by testing uh, intended lettering and uh, uh, embossed lettering. Just to see if you're getting some detail. So the cooling, this helps make sure your, your cooling is dialed in so that you're not getting all blobby and so forth. So. so again, there's a link to this, to a free version of this on Thingiverse. And we're going to generate an STL file from this and go ahead and print it on Simplify 3D. <laughs> Actually, pretty shiny. Usually, this is dull. 
Here's the California filament version, and here's the uh, J-O version. Now, the, the key, though, is the strength of this joint, so. All right, I'm pressing on this hard. This is still uh, uh, warm, so it hasn't really solidified completely. Here's the California filament one. This one is super stiff. Uh, but this is a good joint, so we got, I think we locked in the parameters. Again, we're printing at 237 on the nozzle and uh, 65 degree bed temperature and 10% fan after the first layer. And with this hot weather in the garage, it's up to 88 now. We're printing with the top. Top is uh, just uh, propped on it with a vent on one side. And then uh, we're leaving the door open. So. Let's check the lettering. So the raised lettering looks good. It's super shiny. It's a little hard to see, but definition looks good and the and the um, engraved lettering also looks nice and clean and this is a super shiny surface so this is looks like it's a pretty good filament so I think it's more expensive than California filaments but I'll have to check because so I'm impressed with this so far so that's good because we bought two reels because I wasn't sure we we're gonna be able to get the California filaments so we need to make stuff and uh, if this one works then we can use up all that we bought so that's important all right now it's time for our fun print, the the articulated fish. So that'll be fun to see how I don't think I've printed that before, so fun to see how that turns out. Alright, for our fun print, we're gonna print this fish fossil. This is a articulating uh toy that it prints all in one. You don't have to snap it together or anything. And I I haven't done one of these kind of prints lately. I did a uh F F F14 a long time ago that with PTG they had a lot of problems with but since I got things dialed in now I'm expecting this to work pretty well. So again we're using our parameters that we set up that we tested before. Everything seems to be working great. So bed temperature 65, extruder 237, cooling zero at the first layer and 10% fan. Oh, I didn't go over the speeds earlier but for PTG I do 30, 3000 millimeters per minute instead of I think for PLA, it's 3,600, and then I move a little quicker so it does less stringing. So instead of, I think, 4,200 for PLA, it does uh, 6,000. So this is the parameters I like to use uh, for speeds. And let's see how long this takes. This only takes another 40 minutes. So we've only been testing, only get to test about a couple hours, actually about uh, two and a half hours of testing. So that's a pretty good amount of testing. Since we have a lot of experience printing PETG of other types, so I'm hoping this will come out the same. And if this comes out great, then we'll go ahead and put it in production. articulated so these segments are just stick together. It's going to be a little bit gentle taking this off because we don't want to break anything. All right. <laughs> it worked. All right, looks okay. So surface is super shiny. There's a little bit of stringing in the eye, but I don't think that's a big deal. Um, could remove that if we think it's a problem. Uh, but the bridging on the different segments work fine. You can see that it's holding together. Uh, bottom looks clean. And I think it worked out great. So the thing we're printing with this PTG are these um, outer rim dashboard segments. So they don't. there's not a lot of super detail in them. There's some little features here that need to be crisp, but... Mainly, they need to be flexible and strong, so when you put them together, 
they don't crack. So that's the advantage of PTG. It's more resilient to uh, flex, flexing and things like that. So, all right. Well, this is a good test and it's a fun little print, and we'll add this to our collection. All right. So I would say thumbs up for JOPTG. I checked the prices on Amazon. If you're using Amazon Prime card. With the 5% uh, rewards, it's almost about the same price as buying from California Filament when you use their 20% off coupon, which they seem to send me. Every time I buy something, they send me a 20% off on my next order. So if you buy four at once, uh, I, I think there might be an additional discount if you buy four at once. I can't remember on uh, California Filament, but... Anyway, the price is similar to California filament, so I think either one is okay. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out, and keep looking up.